Honda CRZ, what a cool car. A car designed in a time where the hybrid sports coupe just wasn't a thing. Hybrids were a boring way of uh, getting great fuel economy. There was no such thing as a hybrid sports car and Honda introduced that to the world. I've always loved this car. I've, I love how it looks. I love the crazy interior design of it and the exterior looks of it, the modern reimagining of the CRX. The interior which is like a, the inside of a, a spaceship or a, a, a futuristic starfighter. The hybrid system with its integrated motor that provides extra power when you need it. So today's the day I finally get to find out whether it lives up to the high expectations I've set for it. They definitely designed this car to feel sporty to drive, right from the off, you're, you're sat low down, you've got a lot of car in front of you and almost no car behind you. These really cool looking dials that are like 3D with different layers of uh, colours and, and information. The little pods of uh, instruments on each side of the steering wheel are really great. It lends to this feeling of that you're in like some sort of starfighter cockpit. It's all just to hand and really easy to deal with while you're driving along. Same with all these controls on the right where you've got the sport mode and the, and the economy mode and so on. Even the radio which is in the middle, it's still pointed towards you. So the ride quality around town, it's, it's, it's a little bit jiggly, it's kind of like set up on the firm side but it's definitely not unbearable, it's certainly a car that I could live with every day. The road noise is there, you can definitely feel that, and especially when you get to higher speeds in this car, it does get quite noisy in the cabin. They've got the steering set up just right on this car. When you're tooling around town in normal mode, the steering's quite nice and light and it means it's really easy to manoeuvre the car, but once you get up to higher speeds and you put sport mode on, you can really get that meaty feeling of the steering and it feels like an old school kind of sports car, you know. So the hybrid system in this car, it's not like the Toyota Hybrid Synergy Drive, it's the integrated motor assist, which is something that Honda have been doing since the Insight in the late 90s. It's basically a 1.5 litre VTEC petrol engine with an electric motor sandwiched in between that and the gearbox, and it means that the electric motor never drives the engine on its own, it just assists the engine and uh, it also means that you can attach any gearbox you like to the electric motor and in the case of this car they've gone for a manual gearbox which was not really a thing on hybrids back in the day and that really lends uh, to it its sort of sportiness because it's a Honda gearbox and it's uh, rifle bolt accuracy, it just feels really nice to use. So what, what essentially that hybrid system does is it provides a little bit of extra power to the engine when you need it and generates power back into the batteries when you don't and it also helps with the fuel efficiency because it means that the engine it doesn't have to push quite as hard it doesn't have to work as hard the electric motor just kind of like pushes it along a little bit and helps it out and that means that you get really great fuel economy with this car a word on fuel economy and some either good or bad news depending on how you look at it for a small sports car an average 45 mpg it's very efficient but for a hybrid car it's disappointingly low Officially the car is rated at 55 mpg but most owners, including the owner of this car, report a realistic average of 45. However, a bonus fact if you're in the UK, it's just £20 a year to tax which is less than the monthly cost for most cars. Although it's not especially powerful, it does have quite a nice power delivery and of course in a sports car that's really important because you get the power all the time, it's low down torque, it's like the electric motor, it assists the, back the engine from any RPM and it feels kind of like a supercharged engine in that regard. So although it doesn't accelerate particularly quickly, it does feel a bit like the supercharger in my, in my Mercedes CLK which is also not a very fast car. So this car has got three driving modes, it's got Eco, Normal and Sport. Now Eco reduces the throttle response and makes this car quite awkward to drive in many ways. I would probably leave it in Normal mode for driving around town. When you put it into Sport mode you can feel the steering getting heavier, you can feel the throttle response getting more sensitive so when you put your foot down the car surges forward uh, more readily. So it's got to that point of the video where I need to uh, show you what it's like in the back and I've got backseat JJ for that. Now you may notice that I'm sat in a slightly odd uh, position here and you'll, you'll see why because there's absolutely no way you could get anyone in the back if I weren't uh, sat like this. But yeah, backseat JJ can tell you uh, all about it. <laughs> yeah, so it's absolutely ridiculous back here. This is probably the worst car I've been in the back of yet. There is no space for adults. Uh, only with that seat sat where JJ couldn't drive the car 
can I fit my legs behind him? And as you can see, there's no headroom anyway, so it's basically pointless. With the seat back to his driving position, there's no space. The seat back basically touches the base of the, the rear seat. It's also boiling hot here on a, on a day like this. I've got the tiniest little quarter light, which you know I can maybe look out of. There's no, obviously, creature comforts back here because they didn't expect anyone to sit here. In the USA, there is no back seat, and that's probably what they should have done here. This is basically a padded parcel shelf. Uh, back to you, mate. All right, yeah, thanks, mate, and uh, sorry about that. Thanks for being a, a trooper. And can I and can I get out now? <laughs> for a little sports car, it's quite practical up front because I've actually got decent sized cup holders that fit this fat bottom bottle no problem. And then I've got door pockets. I've got a little cubby hole on the top of the dashboard. I've got another one under here that fits a phone. I've got a, a glove box, which is a reasonable size for this kind of car. On initial glance, the boot is quite small, however with the seats folded down and coupled with its hatchback, the CRZ becomes a surprisingly decent load lugger. A very odd piece of design with this car is the rear spoiler which cuts right through the middle of the, the rear visibility, so you've got this flat piece of glass below the rear spoiler which when it rains gets covered up and you can't really see that well through it, and then the other bit which you can't see that much through anyway, so it kind of cuts the car behind you in half and it means that well, if there's someone tailgating you, it's quite nice because you can't see them. When you're going downhill in this car, it, it regenerates energy into the battery and you often find that you actually have to put your foot down on the accelerator a little bit just to get down the hill because the car won't roll away. It has really good ability to hold back and it's because the regenerative system is, is basically braking the car for you. There are people who've got 100,000 miles out of some brake pads in this car because it's just really light on its brakes, it hardly ever uses them. I actually just got a wave off of some lads in an aquamarine CRZ, so if, uh, if that was you guys and you're watching then uh, hello. It must be one of those cars that people give waves to each other as they see them, which is uh, always cool because it feels like kind of part of one of those clubs. So in 2013 they actually changed the batteries in this car from a nickel metal hydride, which is what in this is in this car, to the more modern lithium ion, which is the kind of batteries you get in your laptop and a lot of modern electric cars. Those are the more desirable batteries, so the car has a little bit more power from the electric motor and as such those cars are a little bit more expensive. So if you notice that the cars from 2013 onwards command a lot more value, that'll be why. If you've got the Sport Plus button on the steering wheel then you'll know that uh, the car has the lithium ion batteries. So it's a complicated hybrid car with an electric motor sandwiched between an engine and a gearbox. Is it reliable? Do, do these things go wrong? And well, fortunately because it's a Honda, not really. The, no big problems that you get with this car. Obviously you need to make sure that that, that 1.5 litre engine is serviced every 10,000 miles like any engine, uh, so check for full service history. The batteries can fail but they don't usually, there's not been that many reports of new batteries being needed and as long as you check that the car is, is, is performing like it should and, you, and you've got enough battery power to have a good few runs in it and a good few acceleration runs then you should be okay. Otherwise it's just little funny things like this car has got an issue with the driver's door handle where the whole handle part is kind of coming off so you have to kind of push the handle in and pull the other part of it to open the door. Little things like that but otherwise they are very well made and robust cars. I'm pleased to report that this car really has lived up to my uh, expectations. It's a really great all-round car. It's, it's fuel efficient, it's economical, it's cheap to run and yet it's kind of like really different and quirky and interesting and, and fun to drive. I think Honda had a real like kind of sense of adventure when they were designing this car and actually really made an effort to make it interesting and different and it, and it really shows through. And today uh, this car can be had for quite small amounts of money given what it is so I, I would highly recommend it to anyone thinking of getting one and uh, thank you very much to Sim for lending me the car uh, and thanks to you guys for watching as always. Please do give the video a like if you've enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you in the next one.